I wanted to start by asking, how are you? How does it feel for having a show you worked on for so long now be out in the world in its entirety? Um, uh, well, thanks. Hi. Uh, yeah, I feel good, you know, I feel good. Um, that said, I feel a bit like I've just got off a really big roller coaster, like a really big one that was going on for three years. And I'm just learning how to kind of walk after that ride. You know, I'm not quite, my feet aren't quite touching the ground properly. A little bit, yeah. Especially after the last episode went out because, uh, you know, it, there was, it was so full of goodbyes. There were so many goodbyes in it. You could kind of feel, yeah, you could just feel the goodbye of it all, really. Yeah, so it, it, it was very moving, that last step. And seeing all those photos and the montage they'd made, it looked to me at least like behind the scenes photos that sort of made the cut into the episode. The team has all said their goodbyes on the show. Does the casting crew of Ted Lasso, are you guys parting ways or do you think you're staying in contact? Oh, we're staying in contact. Yeah, without a doubt. I've made some amazing friends on this on this show. Um, in fact, I was just hanging out with Billy Harris just now. Um, and uh yeah we just had lunch together which was really cool yeah yeah, yeah. no we, we we are we are i mean you know i'm an honorary member i, I guess now of afc richmond seeing as now i'm a diamond dog too so i guess i can say that i'm sort of you know in the gang a bit and um it's, it's um yeah lots of amazing relationships have been you know formed I'm so happy to hear that. And I also, it would be remiss if I didn't mention and send along all the love and gratitude from fans online, because I know you're not super plugged into the internet, but there are entire forums out there dedicated to Trent. There's a podcast <laughs> where every episode is just breaking down what Trent did and the episode of Ted Lasso. Like people are love you... the character. It's called the Crimcast, if you haven't heard of it. Ah, nobody's told me that that's yeah. nuts there are the so many cast? people yeah the crim cast it's real and i am a listener and i'm should be delighted to know that you now know it exists but yeah people wow. feel so just seen and i mean as a gay journalist with anxiety i've never been more represented on television so <laughs> i would <laughs> say just thank you for that character <laughs> Well, I can't take, obviously, I can't take full, full, you know, acceptance of your gratitude because I didn't write the character. Um, uh, but to bring Trent to life and to bring all the, these elements out into into the world of like, you know, like I love that you mentioned, you know, having anxiety and all of that, you know. I mean, I guess everyone has, we all have it. and um, But I feel honoured to sort of represent you in that way. I really, 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 really do. It was a huge privilege. Um, and it kind of like, I mean, yeah, just such, it was such an amazing invitation to play Trent. And um, specifically, I guess, by the time he gets into the kind of space where he can become a safe haven for Billy. Uh, for Colin you know and and to go on that journey from like episode one to where we get to on the Hummer Monument in Amsterdam is like it's, that's what I mean about the ride you know that's quite a ride to go on and um, for, for Trent to have kind of shedded his many he sheds a few personas you know he sheds a few identities they're all kind of protective and then he sheds his um you know, he sheds his, the kind of, uh, the journalist ethics because he wants to be a human more than the profession. And I love that when he did that in season two, it's like, he just blows his career up because he wants to look after a lovely human being, i.e. Ted. Um, so it is amazing to play a character that has those, uh, you know, has that, has that ability to, to evolve and do the, do the, do the, you know, do the right thing. Well, you mentioned a lot of things in there I want to touch on, but one sure. was the fact that he basically nuked his career for someone he doesn't know very well. He mm. gave up an established position. And obviously we've seen through the entire show, Ted gets Jamie with the last away. He gets Roy, he gets Higgins, he gets Rebecca. But I guess I have always viewed Trent as like the human embodiment of Ted's sort of magic because you see him in the premiere, the way he's presented is like the ultimate cynic. So why do you think that Ted's methodology and his approach to life struck a chord with Trent so deeply? 
It happened in uh, episode three of season one, and it happened during the day that Trent spends with Ted, where he starts off this mission to completely eviscerate this uh, what you know clown basically, and um, how dare this American come and manage this English football team? I'm going to completely destroy him. Um, but of course, what happens is he sees a human being uh, uh, um, emanating love, and he sees the effect that that has on everyone that he comes comes into contact with. And Trent is like buffering because he's like hold on i can't you know he's struggling with this and 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 you know as which is sort of personified in the in the scene in the indian restaurant where basically that's the moment where ted completely cracks um trent open and i i, I had a very strong belief in what trent's backstory was which was that he had a very tough dad he oppressive father who wanted this son to be this kind of alpha male a man's man you know all that kind of thing Basically, he wanted a Roy Kent for a son. And Trent, Trent, Trent Krim is, is not Roy Kent. And he couldn't cope with it. And he was also gay. And that was also something that, you know, wouldn't have uh, sort of fallen into line with what his father wanted for him. And when Ted says at that meal, you know, um, it's not about the winning or losing. It's about these young boys becoming the best versions of themselves themselves both on and off the pitch and it ain't always easy especially when you've um had a tough childhood it's like that even though if you see it it's there you see it, it, it like that if you could have heard what happened inside Trent I think his heart just went <laughs> and, and 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 the plug was pulled in terms of him taking um Ted down and and suddenly you know it's almost like yeah all everything just fell and at the end, when Ted says, this is what I was going to say about him personifying it, when Ted says, um, it's been really cool to meet you or something, and, and, and Trent goes, you really mean that, don't you? <laughs> and it's like, he like he doesn't know what to do with it, you know? He's like, I want to I wanna attack it, but I like it. Oh, God, you're nicer to me than my dad. Ah, fuck, I've got to run out of this restaurant. I, I know I don't want dessert, <laughs> you know? And he goes home, and he... he he sort of, I think he just like, you know, he's like, oh, I'm not taking this guy down. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for him. And that takes quietly in the background, that spins Trent Krim's world into a completely other direction. And it unravels all of the, these layers of defensive um, coping mechanisms, basically. I'm just imagining him like spiraling behind the scenes where everyone's trying to win football and he's like, do I quit my job? Do I do I blow up my life for this guy? Yeah. You mentioned the Roy and Trent dynamic, which was something when I was watching that episode, I was so excited because I Roy is like the kind of gatekeeper of like Ted's inner life. It's like if you can get past the guard dog, <laughs> you're in with the rest of the group. But Very what good. stuck yeah. out to me specifically was sort of like the role reversal. You you touched on it as well, but the idea of a gay sort of bookish, very introverted character being cornered in a locker room by like a big burly athletic guy. But normally you would think it's the athletic guy doing the bullying, but in a sense we've seen Trent's entire career has been built on tearing this man down. Yes. So what was it like? I guess I wish we'd seen more of it, but just building that relationship with Brett Goldstein about where Roy and Trent go forward from there. Yeah, it's interesting because the reason that the reason that Trent took him down in the way that he did back in the day was because, as I've mentioned, is that is that Roy Kent was the son that Trent's dad wished he had, which just pissed Trent off. And he'd been bullied at school and all that kind of stuff. So this was his opportunity to take out, you know, an alpha male sort of someone like if Roy Kent had been walking down a school corridor or university corridor. To um towards Trent, I think he would have Trent would have, you know, like hopped into a, into a yeah yeah hopped into like a cupboard or something, and um and and that, that was his sort of way of 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 you know standing up for himself. It, I mean, the thing is, obviously, it was just it was just pain that came out sideways, and that's what happens. And the thing is about it as well is that like yeah, that's one example of it. But I think Trent Krim has got an absolute like wake of devastation with words that he said that have hurt and and really 
you know, um, unsettled, uh, to say the least. Like, uh, you know, words can be really damaging. So, and Trent knows that too. Like, he's built his kind of identity on being a wordsmith, a swordsman of, you know, like that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it was time. It, 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 he he was already at a place of being able to own it, you know, and to and to acknowledge it and go, yeah, I, I really, I'm really sorry, and it wasn't cool, and uh, how, what can I do to make it up? And he was there by the time Roy literally put him in the corner, and I think he it really probably about eighty percent of him was really welcoming it, you know, and just being like, okay, if you're gonna hit me, you're gonna hit me yeah let's go you know what I mean I deserve it actually yeah. and and um and you know and so so from then on really that their their their, their relationship seals from that moment on they're good that's just it that's the beauty and of Roy I think say again I said that's the beauty of Roy I think I think I don't think he's complicated in that way and and actually I don't think Trent is it's like you know, it's like, it's, it, I mean, you can sort of see it the way I walk out. It's like, is that it? Are we done? And it's like, yeah, we're done. You know what I mean? Like, now you're in. And um, I mean, it still takes, not just to do with Roy, it takes Trent quite a long, a few more episodes and a lot, lot, lot further to actually get to the point where he can really start to kind of let the character that I think was in there underneath out, which I think comes much later when he, he sort of sees total football work, you know, when he like runs off and says, it's going to work, you know, that's, that's really the inner trend i think but it took it took a long time of being able to be uh you know just experienced like when you turn up at a party and you you don't really know what to say but by the end you, you know you're in the groove i did want to ask about that scene in particular because there's a lot of moments peppered through the season where you see it's it'll be like beard and roy and higgins and and ted and then trent's sort of on the periphery and you mm. see it in his body language where he's like Am I welcome here? Even in, in the last episode, he like offers to step out on the Diamond Dogs yeah. thing. Was yeah. that all on the page or was part of that coming from you? I mean, it never said in the script what body language Trent had. So that that's never specified. Um, no, I guess that was, you know, me kind of knowing how Trent was feeling really. And I, I one of the things that has been really nice for me is that in a funny sort of way, Trent Prim went from like, kind of like a headshot in, in season one to like, you kind of saw his body, if you know what I mean. And I'm, um, I'm, I mean, I guess all actors are physical, but I, one of the things I love is acting physically. Like I like to tell, I like to feel it. And then therefore it comes out in the physical because you can tell a lot of the way someone's, you know, not looking or looking or standing or whatever. I love that. I, I'm a sort of maybe a kind of, uh, I don't know. No, that's not right. I'm not a frustrated dancer, but <laughs> I love, 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 love dancing. You know what I mean? And there's, I just love what the body can say. And and I loved that opportunity with Trent. That was really cool. You know, I mean, it, and it kind of happened straight away in season three when Trent um, goes into the locker room. Oh yeah, and he's like, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, and it's like the thing about that is I knew that Trent had been into quite a few locker rooms and and had that silent treatment. You know what I mean? And so it was like, and that's why he gives that little look when he steps out. He's like, okay, I'm, 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 I can I can cope with this. It's okay. I, I love all that stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> I also wanted to ask, because you've spoken at length before about how a conversation with Jason Zdeikis about your personal insights to the character was mm. what led to a larger role in the show. Mm. Um, do you always come up with such intricate backstories um, for all of your characters, or was it just something specific to Trent and to Tad Lasso? Well, I, ha I do. I do come up with int uh, intricate backstories. I kind of think that my job is to know whether you know whether they kind of like whether the whether they make their bed in the morning whether they kind of wear odd socks whether they you know whether they're like buddhist or whether they're anything i like more like you have an idea for a character and then what happens is is you start thinking about that character and why they are the way they are life seems to sort of come towards you and little things like i'll hear a piece of music and i'll go oh yeah trent say um like a mid lake fan like this music um but he's also he loves dolly parton and you know and then and and, and and like golden girls is one of his favorite tv shows and you know and then all these things just start like 
coming in and then you build this world and then they're sort of in you like in you with all your memories and me with mine and what happens is they sort of live quietly in 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 ter- in, in you and I think that's kind of what my job is really I love it does that make sense absolutely yeah I guess going off of that so now I have to ask because people online are dying to know does Colin says he just wants to be able to kiss his fella. Does Trent have a fella at home? Does he have an ex-wife? Does he have a partner? What's the situation going on there? So Trent has, um, has so Trent was in a relationship with, with a woman a, a while ago and he has a daughter with, with that woman. Um, and they were together. Um, it didn't it didn't work out um, um, for obvious reasons, but there's a lot of love there. And he has this gorgeous daughter and their relationship. Say again. And her name is. I can't. I, do you know what? The only reason I won't tell you her name is because I'm not a writer on the show. Oh, so okay, I, okay. I can't. I can't. I it would. I'd be overstepping the line. Um, but I do have a name for her. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, I've got a whole world like with with Trent and 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 his daughter and and what he's up to but um what I will say is that I felt that in certainly in season three no he doesn't he doesn't have a relationship but he is uh he is lightly dating (laughs) he's lightly dating good for him is he on banter he's not on banter (laughs) he's he's not on banter he's he's uh, the one thing that I did give Trent which is kind of or I'm sure I gave Trent lots of things that there's a crossover but um the one of the ones was is that I even though he's you know um in a world of media with being a journalist but it, but I kind of had him not really as someone who's on his phone loads you know so he's not really an apps guy in my opinion but yeah. you know I see that for sure yeah. I also wanted to ask, there is a popular fan reading online that Trent's interest in Ted, in addition to the professional aspirational yes. capacity, might be a little bit of a crush or a romantic one. Is mm-hmm. that in your head at all? Or does that surprise you that people are reading it that way? Well, let me tell you this. Nobody has asked me that question in the whole time that I've been doing interviews for this show. But I feel that I am able to tell you what I think about that. And I think that um, Trent absolutely had a crush on, <laughs> absolutely had a crush on Ted. So many people are going to be happy <laughs> to hear you say that. <laughs> well, I mean, look, it, you know, it, Ted Lasso looks a lot like Jason Sudeikis with a very, very, um, a, you know, I, I like that little moustache, little moustache of his. And there's, he's got his, he's got it going on, that guy. And, uh, you know, um, Trent recognizes that. <laughs> we can't blame him. Who doesn't? He can't blame him. He's, he's he's a sexy guy. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you also mentioned you mentioned Midlake. You mentioned Dolly Parton. You mentioned Golden yeah. Girls. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but a lot of those T-shirts that he wore and a mug, I believe, came from you. Is that right? Mm. So how did you develop that collaboration with costuming? So the costume designer is this incredible person called Jackie Levy. And Jackie is the kind of costume designer who um, approaches the, uh, the the work as a conversation. So she's really, really, really interested in, in what the actor thinks and is going to bring to it, which is just um, a blessing for me because, as you, you know, as you've kind of mentioned, I have a kind of an intricate, you know, um, I think about it a lot. And and so I, I was really clear with, um, you know, influences that I felt that Trent would have. And um, particularly like, yeah, I mean, all of it really. And so um, Jackie would, would bring in things and we would just, we would just, you know, we'd throw it all on and we're like, yeah, there it is, that's Trent, there he is. And then we'd throw other stuff on and go, that's just not Trent, that's just not, that's not it. And then I would like, for instance, I went to a Midlake gig at the roundhouse and they were it was the most, one of the most beautiful nights ever and and i was watching it and i knew i just was i was like trent and it wasn't just because because there's loads of bands that i love that i don't think that trent would dig but anyway i was like trent would love this band so i went and i bought the um the the, 
the tour t-shirt and um and uh and went into jackie and said hey jackie what do you think and she was like let's see if we can get it in and then you know and we did and we're really oh i'm giving you a thumbs up here and then I we were really it. ah you're welcome and then we were really specific although it didn't actually get shown that much in the show more to do with the edit but i was i always knew that my final t-shirt in afc richmond was going to be the golden girls t-shirt and why was that because for me that was like i always felt like that was trent's favorite t-shirt and it's kind of like that he there's no way on earth he would have come into afc richmond in uh at the beginning wearing that he if you look he's wearing a tie and a shirt still he's still kind of got the old kind of cocoon of of, of the, the previous incarnation of him but by the end yeah, he's in his Golden Girls t-shirt because that's what he wants. He likes wearing. He's fully, he's fully comfortable. Um, but that was the penultimate time you see him. The last time you see him is where he's wearing his jumper um, in the bookstore, which is like this really bookish kind of quite colourful, very, uh, very, you've never seen Trent wear anything like that before. But how I got that was the costume, one of the team on the costume, a gorgeous man called Lawrence, was wearing it and when he, when he was doing my stuff and I just saw it and I was like, dude, can I steal your t-shirt for Trent in the last scene? <laughs> he was like, really? I was like, no, not t-shirt, jumper. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah. And then so we asked Jack and we spoke and we worked it out and it was like, yeah. So I I, I took from, I take from everyone really, <laughs> clothes wise if I can. At that book signing, we saw a cardboard cutout of Trent what was it like mm. seeing yourself as a cardboard cutout and can I have it? <laughs> yeah. There's a few of them. So yeah, they're around. Um, I, well, yeah, it was weird because it was literally life size. There was, was there, it? yeah, it was life size. Exactly. And I didn't realize I was quite so quite big, really. <laughs> um, yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah. And then at that book signing, I guess that's a very clear end point for Trent's trajectory, at least on the show. Where do yeah. you, sure him going next because he's written the book but he doesn't really have a journalism career to fall back on anymore so mm. what is the ne what's next for Trent Krim? Well I I kind of had this idea that um he was going to spend quite a bit of time being a bit, bit being a dad because he'd been around quite a lot you know uh with the a AFC Richmond and that his uh, the mother of his uh child was a bit like you know it was kind of like all right, you've been doing all of that for all of this time. Great. Now I've I got a life and I need to do some stuff. So I think it was time for him, and I think he wanted would want to really to spend more time um, with uh, with his daughter and kind of like do the childcare, you know. Um, so you know, but but that said, there's definitely I think you know I think he's on the journey as a as a writer. I think he's well, he, I, I get the feeling that he, you know another deep dive would be um would be pretty um he'd be pretty curious about that but the other thing is in my opinion i mean i, I don't know but i think the book does well you know i think he, he makes he makes some money he does all right so you know who knows what he's going to get up so i think the next focus is like finding um finding a partner heck yeah and i that's all i've got for you all my time but thank you so much again it's been for lovely this, meeting also you. for being just such an amazing character and bringing so much of that to the role Oh, that's so kind. I'm loving your uh, the wall behind you. It's oh. lively. There's some great stuff going on there. Thank you. Thank you so it's, much. It's lovely to meet you. Take lovely care. Lovely to meet you too. Take care. Have a good one.